Our guest, Cavador, just spilled his guts. Not literally. It wasn't necessary. Cavador was instructed to deliver two sorts of artifacts. Brass masks and... Those slave masks on Karras' servants? And some sort of agricultural device called a cultivator. Thirty of each. Each? So they're connected. We have to assume so. Unfortunately, our efforts to secure a mask have been... Uh, frustrated. Hmm. Listen, I think I know where we can lay our hands on one of those masks. There's a collector named Bram Gervasius with an interest in masks and headdresses. Last time I was down in the Lost City, he had a commission out for that sort of thing. Gervasius? I've had an agent on his case. And apparently the mechanists have been making overtures. Three guesses why. What can your agent give me on his house? Gervasius is planning an exhibition. He's bringing his collection with him from his summer home. The private exhibit areas are on the top floor. Access is by elevator, controlled from the top floor. It's almost airtight. Almost? There's talk of a secret passage. Unfortunately, its location remains secret. Then I'll need to find it. Now. We can't afford any delays later when the masks arrive. Karras is holed up inside the Mechanist Cathedral, and it looks like whatever he's up to, we're running out of time. Now that I've established such a close working relationship with Lord Gervasius's security systems, going back in for those masks shouldn't be too much trouble. I hope we can count on the quality of this working relationship. Gervasius's security systems are not the most dangerous thing I've ever worked with. Do I have to ask what is? <laughs> We're on the clock. How has Karis been using the time we've had to wait? He's been making some modifications to the Mechanist Cathedral, including some sort of valves or seals on the doors. Why, we don't know yet. Inside, it just looks like a huge factory full of machines and equipment. Whatever it is, I'm sure it's tied into those precursor artifacts. The sooner we can get a hold of those, the sooner we'll know. And get Karis off our backs. And stop. Whatever he's planning. Uh-huh. Don't wait up. I'll be working late. Our guest, Cavador, just spilled his guts. Not literally. It wasn't necessary. Cavador was instructed to deliver two sorts of artifacts. Brass masks and... Those slave masks on Karras' servants? And some sort of agricultural device called a cultivator. Thirty of each. Each? So they're connected. We have to assume so. Unfortunately, our efforts to secure a mask have been... Uh, frustrated. Hmm... Listen, I think I know where we can lay our hands on one of those masks. There's a collector named Bram Gervasius with an interest in masks and headdresses. Last time I was down in the Lost City, he had a commission out for that sort of thing. Gervasius? I've had an agent on his case. And apparently the mechanists have been making overtures. Three guesses why. What can your agent give me on his house? Gervasius is planning an exhibition. He's bringing his collection with him from his summer home. The private exhibit areas are on the top floor. Access is by elevator, controlled from the top floor. It's almost airtight. Almost? There's talk of a secret passage. Unfortunately, its location remains secret. Then I'll need to find it. Now. We can't afford any delays later when the masks arrive. Karras is holed up inside the Mechanist Cathedral, and it looks like whatever he's up to, we're running out of time. Now 
now that I've established such a close working relationship with Lord Gervasius's security systems, going back in for those masks shouldn't be too much trouble. I hope we can count on the quality of this working relationship. Gervasius's security systems are not the most dangerous thing I've ever worked with. Do I have to ask what is? <laughs> We're on the clock. How has Karis been using the time we've had? Welcome, fellow Teffers, to Inside at Last, the one and only Thief Dedicated Podcast. My name is Alex, and today I am joined by Jake and Seth again. Two people, two missions. What can go wrong? Uh, hi, guys. Hello, hello. Good evening. So, first thing I have to say, I was an idiot in the last episode. And not as always, but even more an idiot. Um, because... <laughs> One hour after I released the episode, I was looking at the at the briefing video again, um, and I was like, "Oh wait, this isn't Cavador's beard. It's that strange mask he's wearing in the briefing video on that way standing on that balcony." And I always thought it is a beard for some weird reason. Hi, Azamir, by the way, um, and. Yeah, and I was embarrassed, and then I wrote it on our channel and uh, on, on Discord. But Random Taffer told me that yeah, it could be seen as a beard as well. Um, so I was a bit, uh, I was calm after that. But why didn't you guys correct me during the episode? I could slap you in the face. I definitely <laughs> retroactively imagined a beard as well. Like as soon as you described him with a beard, image of Cavador with a beard was in my brain. Yeah, so and I thought like, okay, so they weren't able to construct the beard on the 3D model, so they just gave him this mask. But then, yeah, after that, I was like, oh, no. And people, you know, people in the back, he, 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 this idiot again, he doesn't know. Um. <laughs> it's a plausible story based on the appearance. And yeah, based on the fact that sometimes in, in uh, games, especially early games, early 3D games, it's easier to... Uh, Stick a hat or a mask or something on somebody, then yeah. But I made a whole hair. I made a whole chapter about it of like, oh, would mechanists like shave and stuff like that? Yeah. You know, <laughs> interesting, interesting discussion though. And it's like, what? How would that fit into their beliefs? Yeah, and it totally. You know, it totally didn't have any reason to be. But uh, yeah, the other thing is, um, I don't know. Mike never listens, brethren. He never does. But I'm, uh, I'm wearing a beautiful shirt tonight just for him. Um, yeah, we had a funny interaction on the interwebs uh, with the Editor's Guild. Uh, thanks for that. That was really fun. Um, Mike was complaining about my shirt. So I sent him several videos. Um, or Jake, uh, Seth, my, my spy on the Editor's Guild did. Um, and I, I was wearing one beautiful shirt after the other. And Mike, I think he almost collapsed. Um, but the thing is, I, I thought about it. You know, like Mike is like three times the age of us. And I, I remember when, um, so Brethren, no, the user Brethren, you all guys know them. Um, and I remember when we met Stephen Russell, Mike always called him young man um, and said to him, like, hey, when you are in my age. Um, so I think those modern shirts are just not for him. Um, and yeah, I, I hope he, he will survive this. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, a, it was really fun. And thanks to everybody, especially Skaki for his funny comment. And thanks for my little spy there. Seth, you did a great job. I had a good laugh too. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, to the topic, uh, yeah, today we are uh, talking about two missions. We didn't have so many comments, but we had very vast comments, I would say. Um, so uh, many opinions, uh, which is great. Thanks to everybody who sent them in. Um, one thing... Yeah, uh, you just reminded me, Adrian J. He wrote me an email um, with a article he wrote about. It's about atmosphere in two ways on character-based stealth games, and he uses the examples Hitman Three, One Mission, and the Mission Masks. And I didn't have the time this week or not the brain for it to translate it because it's written in a very academic German. Um, beautiful, actually. 
but yeah, but uh, Seth, you did it now and you uh, got the gist of it. Is that correct or not? That is correct. Yeah, I gave it a quick read through. Um, I had some magical translation software at my fingertips, so I took advantage of that. And I think I have the gist of the case that uh, Mr. Young is making here. Okay, that's good. Thank you for that. Um, and but it, it's really long. Um, but so the the article, the link to the article, German article, is in the description. So if you guys want to read the whole thing, it's really interesting. Um, then I think there are translation programs you can use uh, to to get the idea. Um, but yeah, so casing the joint and masks. Where do we start actually? Wh what is casing the joint about, guys? Can you tell me, please? Sure. So we come to casing the joint from the last mission kidnapped. So we have Brother Cavador. We give him over. Um, he's tortured for information or persuaded for information, if you want to put it that way. And he reveals that he is set to uh, give some uh, artifacts to the mechanists, the masks, and the uh, cultivator. And uh, uh, they, Garrett is after these masks and the cultivator that are being displayed in the mansion of Lord Gervasius. Um, so Garrett has to get into the mansion and, uh, well, I guess in the... In, we'll start with casing, right? He's got to case yep. the joint, so figure out what's going on and uh, find the secrets of the mansion and uh, map it out, get out. So, And the reason why Garrett's doing this is because Gervasius is holding an exhibition where these things are going to be on display and he wants to get in and know how to get around this place before the exhibition is in place. He knows it's going to be a lot harder to deal with after the fact. So this is a preparatory run. Yeah, um, and after jumping and diving through caves and shipping through the sea to a nearby place, um, to the lost city and stuff, uh, how did you guys feel being back in a civilized world? Well, now I'm bunny hopping through empty halls, aren't I? On it's carpet. Safe. I, yeah. I really like it. I, I really like it being back and because of what you're kind of getting at Alex with like the juxtaposition between like we have had several missions that have been not traditional mansion uh, castle burglary missions. We've had some unorthodox missions, some good ones, but some ones that aren't completely, uh, you know, standard thieves. So it's uh, I feel like it was good to come back and rob a mansion before the finale. So, yep. But that of course there's a strange reason or or strange decision they made and that's the reason we do both uh, missions in one episode and that is um it's like two times the same building just slightly different or yeah actually it's the same building but with different positioning of guards and yeah of course a different objective but um what do you guys think i think uh, the community is a bit divided over that but I think the main thing is like people are not so happy to visit the same, um, the same uh, building twice in a row. What, what what is your opinion on that? I have so I'm divided on it. I I find if I'm offering an opinion on just visiting the same mission twice, um, I think it's an interesting choice in that I don't think that. Uh, I don't think it's out of character. We do mis we do visit um, the Hammerite Temple in Thief One twice, but we don't do it uh, back to back, right? We visit um, we visit the Hammerite Temple in Undercover, and then again many missions later, in, not many, but a few missions later in uh, Strange Bedfellows. So in a way, this is already um, par for the course for Thief, right? Like we knew that at some point we were gonna. Do this again um but it, it's this is the this is the time that we actually have it like right next to each other so you you do your dry run and then you're theoretically back the very next night um and i feel like I, it does feel like you are playing a semi-finished mission um on night one and then playing the finished product on night two um and i almost wish that they had just used the same it just doesn't feel like the same map, even though it is. I just I wish that they had used the same finished product twice and just given me different objectives, you know? 
Yeah, and I think the difference to Thief 1 is isn't the cathedral is totally destroyed in the second visit, when, if I remember it correctly. Yes. So, so it's in, totally different, you know, and, and I think then you go underground and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's I think it's a very different approach. And as you said, yes. that it's not like um, back to back. Um, I I think what, what I don't really get, or it feels a bit strange to me, I, like Garrett has visited countless um, mansions and stuff. And this is not a very special one, I would say. You know, it doesn't have like this huge thing where it's suddenly, you know, like, like of course, like um, like the sword or something. You know, of course, I didn't expect that. And um, I think this is a one-time mission you can do to only do once. But, you know, like, would Garrett really go there once to prepare a bit and to check out the place? He did that several times on, on very different and difficult locations. Uh, and he just visited once and got the job done. And now he's like, yeah, you know, like, I mean, you, you could have done something in Thief 1, like, oh, I visit the Lost City once and check everything out. And then I come back. No, I'm never coming back. But, um <laughs> You know, it's it's it feels a bit strange to me. He doesn't a, seem like the kind of guy who prepares. He's like he ne he's he's always laid on rent. Why would he prepare for a job in this manner? You know. Sorry, Jake. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say I think that the um I think the idea of like casing like obviously real thieves and burglars like do like go someplace several times and learn the patrols and the the, the layouts of stuff. So that's you know very. Uh, very on point for thievery, but yeah, it's kind of doesn't, it's not something that happens elsewhere in the series. And I do, I like the mansion, especially in masks, like once it's fully filled out, I think it's a pretty good mansion. I don't think it's quite, it doesn't have that same special quality. I think of like Constantine's or Truett's mansion, but I think it's a solid mansion. However, yeah, there's not much really different about it where you need to scope it out, case it out beforehand. So yeah. There is there is an interesting similarity again between strange bedfellows and masks, which is that a previously inaccessible area becomes accessible. So it it does in some ways feel as though they were trying to follow up on that and and repeat the format just in a really weird way. Um I think uh you you said at the beginning like it's like playing the unfinished mission and then the finished one. I actually thought that when I pl played Casing the Joint, I was like, oh, it's really bland. But then when you play the second mission, it's like, okay, it makes sense. You know, they are planning this whole event. And at the first time Garen visits, it's like the rooms are still in preparation and am maybe empty. Um, uh, especially that one place, you know, um, where you are uh, up there uh, in the middle, there is... Is it actually one of the masks, I think? Uh, and uh, upstairs is a wooden beam, you know, where a guard walks up. Um, and in the first one, in, in casing the joint, it's like really just empty. And I was like, what? What? This room has no purpose at all. Um, but I think they answer it in the second one. So I, I'm not too harsh about that. But still, I think it's like, wouldn't Garrett do this in, in just one go? You know, prepare. He has... Yeah, okay, scanning out this place, but he doesn't need to do that. He has been in in other places. Um, you, you know, like the like Angel Watchtower would maybe some, some something to check out first. Um, and then, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, I and, mean, and this is pretty easy, um, in my opinion. But I think it's nice to, to be back in civilization. Sorry. No, it's quite all right. I think the exhibition hall is an interesting case in that, like. You wouldn't have to do much to tell me that this is an exhibition hall, but it even, I think the tells are missing, right? Like, there's one person supposedly setting up the exhibition hall, and she's she's patrolling it, but um, she's not, there's like, there's no, there's no boxes being unpacked, there's no, um, there's no lists of artifacts posted anywhere. Like, a simple readable with an inventory and a suggestion about where to place them would have probably sufficed to tell that story. But like, unless you have done museum prep, you're not going to look at those white walls and go, ah, yes, these are, this is an exhibition hall and this is where these objects are going to go until the second mission when you get the payoff, right? So it's just kind of like, there was no, there was no, um, 
there was no planting. It, it was supposed to be planting and payoff, but the planting kind of feels like it's missing on that. Yeah. Um, what I remember, um, once when I was with the old dudes with Nex and Psychosis, we already mentioned casing the joint and masks. And I remember, if I remembered correctly, but it must have been me, um, I had the idea, um, and since I like it still so much, it must have been me, um, that maybe if you need those two runs, maybe why couldn't Garrett in the first one uh, go in there and steal one of the max max and or maybe parts of one of those servants you know and in the second run you go there as one of the servants like yeah like in strange bedfellows you know you you you, you it's, it's not a new theme to thief you know um so uh, it worked once and, and they tried different things in thief to the second time so why not this you know and then and then you can go there as a servant you don't have to talk again you know and 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 then this would be a very interesting approach that you really blend in with the folks and maybe you have to do some task like oh uh, someone is giving you orders um or you yeah right wouldn't that be great like you need to go to a certain place but it is locked it's inaccessible so you need to find the right person so the person sends you there to grab something and while you're in his his room or whatever you actually you know pick up what you need or an important thing you know um yeah well what do you guys think about that idea i think it's I, cool like i think the idea of like un being undercover is cool but at the same time like i know how kind of wonky it was in the first game and also like i'm not sure so somebody in the community maybe answer this what is fully possible with like scripting and things of that nature in terms of um different states you know to where you go up to a guard and they're like here's the key go get me the thing like come back with the thing you know what i mean like i know thief you know with its age and with its engine like there's certain things that are tough to do i mean but that if they could if that could be pulled off that would be great like go like hiding in plain sight i think would have been great to do and in this game again like you're, undercover you're, right. you're totally right and they didn't have the time they didn't have the money um, they didn't even have the the time to fully um, texture the pipes. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you stumbled upon that one I pipe did not that is that. Tra transparent from that one side. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's it, every time I play this mission, I, I remember it. I, I'm always looking for it. Oh, where's the pipe that that is invisible from that one side? But when you come from the other side, you can see it. Um, um, I think it's on the gameplay video. I think I stopped there and watched it. Um, no, but of course, you're totally right, Jake. I think this would have meant uh, way more workload to do than just maybe changing some things or co copying the the basics of the level and then just filling in things in, in masks. Um, I what think... if... Um... Yep. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go on. I was going to say, what if... Um, I know not to maybe get into this all the way, maybe say this for a different time, but I know originally the idea for like Thief to gold was to have a mission in between uh, casing and masks. And I almost wonder if that would have really benefited the mission to have at least one, if not two missions between these missions. And then you come back and you're like, Oh, I remember this mansion from like a few hours ago in, in, you know, in playtime in terms of yep. rather than like, I'm doing these back to back. It's like, of course I remember, like I just did this, but I think it would have been yeah. a lot more interesting to come back like a mission or two in between and then being like, Oh, here's my map that I made a couple missions ago. And here's, you know, my notes I made or whatever. Well, our friend, uh, Mr. Rhymekey pointed out, it's been two weeks since, since casing the joint by the time masks takes place. Um, and that went right over my head. So of course, in that time frame, if Garrett is smart enough to case this place and do uh, Jake, uh, hello, yeah, Seth, your um, you cut a little bit. Yep, but um, Seth, are you there again? Yep, I'm still here. So can you please repeat the last part? Yes, absolutely. So I said that it was pointed out. It's been there's two weeks between the two missions. So by the time Masks takes place, it's been two weeks since casing the joint. And one would think that since Garrett is smart enough to case the place and prepare for his actual raid, that 
in the interim, he would do other things to prepare, like gather special equipment. And again, he's gone. No, I didn't understand. Just to pick up, I guess, where he left off. Yeah, it doesn't... I read that, like... Thank you for uh, for posting that in the chat and reminding us because I forgot that there was two weeks between missions. Um, like Mirror, like I completely forgot about that, and because like the game doesn't really. Um, I think yeah, having that mission, you could easily stick a mission in between there, and uh, you know have that feel like it's two weeks. But as a player, you know you watch the cutscene and it's like, oh, I'm back here again. So it's like, why even have why even make it two weeks? Like you like. Ekmer, I think, referred to in his comment, like there's no sense of passing between the two missions. So, yeah, it's 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 a, it's it's strange. I think it's just they had to do it. I think they they were out of I don't know levels and time and whatnot. I think this is I I would actually believe that this is not a sto written decision. You know that that wasn't written in first place and and someone had it on his mind. Um, and and was like oh yeah that's a great idea i think uh, they that was a necessity and i think they had a lot of stuff to do to finish this not all so finished game um <laughs> what i think uh one of the comments was and i have to say it's really strange but reddit comments are just like one line and it's done so most of them i couldn't use um it's like yeah it's a bad mission okay thanks um Casing the joint should not be back to back with masks. It should have been earlier. Um, yeah, and I was like, you just said that, Jake. But how much earlier, and, and how could that make sense? How could you know in the context of other missions? Because I think many missions are like are like follow up missions. You know, just like um, precious cargo and and um, kidnap are you back to back missions, of course, and they make sense. Um, so what would be the, the the best way to to make it yeah to, to find a way to put casing the joint maybe in the first half of the of the of the story have you have you an idea well i just thinking about it now um i mean i know the idea for for you know the hypothetical never realized you know thief to gold was to have i think new missions but if you're taking it from this perspective but earlier in the game Perhaps he's casing that joint for a completely separate reason. You know, maybe he knows that maybe he knows or maybe he knows that there's going to be um, the kind of uh, the showing off of the masks, but he doesn't understand the connection yet to the mechanists. And then maybe after. So, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. So say after, you know, uh, like eavesdropping or something like you put casing the joint. Right. And then you garrett's like oh i hear about you know he at the at the uh cathedral or whatever at the uh mechanist compound he hears about oh yeah you know so and so is gonna have like a mass it's gonna be you know good chance to get some money and then later on in the game after you do kidnapped that's when you're like he, garrett's like oh that that this this is connected to this other thing you see what i'm saying like he's just going there to rob it for money like kind of like shipping and receiving but then later in the game he finds out that it's connected to his new mission, which is to stop uh, Karis. I that mean, would, that's the only thing I can think of. That would actually be the most logical and the easiest way to do it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, I, so the rent is late, or or the you know the landlord wants more more rent, and so Garrett has to pick it up. Um, and yes, of course, he he needs you know his apartment costs three thousand a month. So, of course, he needs to pick up a lot of money. But, yeah, I think that would be the easiest way. And actually, I think would have made it better. Like like, like a back-to-back, -back, almost the same mission is like, meh. It, 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 feels, it always feels strange. And I, yeah. I, I can't remember how I felt back in the days. But, um, yeah, it, it was strange. Because the, you, the the missions are not too different from each other, you know. Exactly. Yeah, you're not dealing like you said, Alex, earlier with undercover and uh, with um, strange bedfellows, where it's destroyed now. It's filled with monsters. Like it's not social stealth anymore. It's traditional stealth. So the the objectives completely change, and you're going underground after a certain points. So there's like an addition to the mission. Like this is pretty much the same mansion with you know some more loot and some more furniture and some more guards and like different patrol routes and that's about it so 
I know playing it, you know, somewhat more recently, I remember thinking like, I, I was like, oh, I like this mansion, but I was like, I just did this mission. And it the only thing was like, it was nice as a player who doesn't ghost normally. I'm more of a like, you know, I, I like to, well, I ghost, but I'm not um, complete ghost. Like I like to be unseen, but then blackjack. Yeah. So at, when I got to mass, I was like, oh, finally, I was like, I can use the blackjack. So it was kind of a relief, but I was like, man, this, this mansion is getting a little bit tiresome because I did them like back to back. Did you guys also have that feeling that the guards on Casing the Joint are a bit more sensitive? Yes. Oh, absolutely. They're on yes. turbo. Uh -huh, 100%. They definitely have more of a... They seem more sensitive. And that's another problem, if we want to get into problems, where I had with Casing especially, where it would be like, I wouldn't make anything that I thought was like alertable noise, and then I would fail the mission. I'd be like, oh, guards, guard says you're not... Uh, you know, you're making noise. Guard figures you out. And I'm just like scratching my head going like, what did I do? Like, I didn't break a window. I didn't shoot an arrow. I didn't knock anybody out. It's just like some guard got alerted. And then it was, yeah. that's it. And, and uh, or sometimes uh, I had it two times. I think that I was like going to a, another place pretty fast. And, you know, I have been there and, and they were searching for me, you know, like they heard something. And I think, Seth, you had a not so nice situation <laughs> um, with that. Yeah, what I, what, what, before that, I want to say, and I don't, I don't think maybe it's just our uh, impression. Maybe maybe it, it, the guards aren't on more alert, but as is in the chat, he will tell us. Um, but, you know, it's like almost the game is almost done so you are used to the ai behavior by now and you you get a feeling for what can i do you know what is possible to and, and to be identified and not um and and suddenly it feels very very different um and i would say that it um, even us now like 20 years of experience of the game or maybe i don't know how many you have jake but um It's like it still feels like that, you know. Suddenly the guards are doing stuff where I'm like, "Hell, oh, wait! This wouldn't they wouldn't act like this uh, normally." So I think it's it's not a good decision if there was one. Um, but Seth, yeah, <laughs> tell us your story. I think many can relate. Yeah, so I I crossed the hallway between the tile floor and the carpet on the opposite side of a closed door, and I quick saved when I hit the carpet, and then suddenly the mission ended in a fail state and i was like what did i do and then i reloaded the save game and opened the door and realized i had triggered a guard like halfway up the hall because the sound propagation didn't factor the door in i guess um and i couldn't see or hear the guard from where i was so i got destroyed by that i had to restart the whole mission because i hadn't done any hard saves was it maybe one of those doors where there's actually where you can walk on the beams in between like like it might have been I actually didn't go back to look afterwards. Because there they have been very, very sensitive, of course, because there's an open uh, thing in the wall. But uh, yeah, it, it, it still felt a bit strange because one step on a tile normally doesn't alert the guards. They they are just like, huh, is someone there? And then they go back into no alert state. Uh, but yeah, and, and it sucks. But this, I think this was another situation where we, we should finally use this great tool the the quick save uh, tool um that was done by one of the community members um because i had yeah you know, in the last mission i had the the problem with kevador i couldn't pick him up anymore and yeah we should use that tool i think you know it would be great and beneficial for us journalists <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah um so i think oh and yeah sorry go on oh no sorry i was gonna say um i think too another thing that uh I believe we're talking about in the chat um, is it the the mission and Seth can speak to this too. The mass seems much brighter than casing. Casing seems like much is much darker. Okay. Do yeah. You, do you mean the lighting? Ja yeah. Jason mentioned that it's um, the phases of the moon have changed, and the devs actually took the time to reflect that in the brightness of the night sky. Um, so when you start casing the joint, it's quite dark. And when you start masks, it's quite bright. And it kind of, if you've just, like, you exit onto the street at the end of casing and start on the outside of the mansion in masks. So it's really noticeable that you finish the mission in a dark environment and start the next one in a bright one. And it makes you immediately wonder, like, if you're not following the story and you don't know it's that two weeks has passed, you're like, oh, is Garrett getting up early all of a sudden? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, I think it's a bit disguised by the weather in, in masks. 
um, maybe. But I, I didn't recognize it actually. I, um, but yeah, uh, you guys uh, will tell the truth. Um, oh, but that's interesting. You know, they had time for this. You know, maybe that's exactly what I was just thinking, Alex. <laughs> like they, they had time to change the moon but they didn't have time to change the level I'm just they like, had oh. time to change the moon that's an awesome <laughs> statement <laughs> it is it's very uh very surreal very a surreal saying yeah i wonder if the skybox is is used in any other maps or if it's independent because if somebody actually went to the trouble to make a special skybox for this specific map i would just be like wow that's a lot of time and resources for one small feature yeah actually you know, you know there are so many unused dialogues in the original release and you know uh, yeah but hey it's it's fine uh, we can deal with it and i think it's time to read out uh yeah one of the longer comments we, of course we got the usual guys like plutonia aminol the bull esmir um and some others um who wants to start with the plutonia comment okay seth here you go yep um, i was about to volunteer <laughs> um so plutonia says a brief opinion i don't have brief opinions i think casing the joint gets a lot of undeserved hate it's surprisingly good for the pacing of the game because it's like a little break it's a mission with very few guards and a boatload of tiny loot items hidden all over the place. The atmosphere is very warm and comfortable. Also, objectives that can be completed in one mission or the next are a completely unique mechanic to this one. So I, I want to stop there for a second. Yeah. What objective is that? Is that the correspondence objective? I was thinking of that too. I think that I believe that it is the correspondence objective because I actually solved that in the first mission and it started checked off already in the second mission. So I think I that is what they're talking about. I didn't pay attention um, actually to this. Um, yeah, uh, I had a rough week, as I said, but um, yeah, it's it's um, yeah, yeah. This one would is a cool thing then, you know. Um, and that's something actually we, we would have loved with many things in, in other missions, like you know, like. Um, a, gear that you can take from one mission to another and stuff like that um that should have happened way more often and yeah but maybe I well, think it's, it's a different story to do that and to do that just imagine the replayability if you could find a key in an earlier mission that carried through to a door in a later mission right like that would already add some interesting replay value um so yeah persist persistent objectives very interesting so continuing Plutonia's comment. A big problem with casing is the fact that the third floor is meant to be inaccessible for no tactical reason, and thus the level designers even left it unfinished. Why shouldn't Garrett case that area as well? The second problem is that it's a mission with a mandatory stealth but a quiet exit, and no evidence left behind is not possible at all since you have to break a window to escape, which <laughs> makes no sense because the reason that you can't get caught is that nobody should know you've been there in the first place. It's a yeah, pretty and, good point. And I think in the chat, uh, I think it was Esamir who said that it's a bit strange. The, the, the guards should be on higher alert in masks, not on casing the joint. You know, uh, Correct. Which, which, which makes sense. But Yeah, of uh, course, there's loot missing at the very least. Uh, do you have to break a window? That's what I saw this comment before we started recording. And isn't there one, I could be mistaken, somebody can correct me. But isn't there the one door that you can go out of, or do you have to break a window? I think there's you can a go through the door. You can go through the door, but there's a guard standing directly in front of it who never moves, so you have to be pretty quick about it, I believe. Yeah, mm. I think I think uh, uh, um, huh. sound arrow. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, uh, could work here. Or... Noisemaker. Yep. Yeah, noisemaker. Noisemaker. Right. Get him away. Get him away um, from there, and then go out the door. Yep, I think that. Which still uh, leaves, uh, still I guess, still reinforces his comment of like, there's arrows and like you know jewels yeah. and stuff missing. It's like, well, yeah, they should be uh, should be a lot more suspicion in masks for sure. Well, yep. that's one of the funny things about it though is that when you play casing, the place isn't properly set up. There's furniture missing. There's loot for Garrett to steal, and then when you go back the second night, there's more furniture and fresh loot. So it's like, is Gervasius just putting more furniture out to look richer for his guests? <laughs> or does he just not live in his own house? What's going on? 
I think that's an interesting thing. And uh, maybe, yeah, um, I thought about this as well. Oh, here you can see a window where you can get out on the stream right now, um, which I found very strange, but just side uh, comment. Um, yeah, I had the same feeling. And I, I could, you know, if I would think of the humor of, of the Looking Glass Studios, I think that would totally fit to the whole view on the rich and everything. Uh, it's just for show, you know. Um, does he read them all or are they just for show? Uh, you know, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's I, I think that this is like a, a subtle comment. That's what I like about this game. Like, I mean, I guess to speak more broadly, but this mission illustrates it. So I guess it ties in. But like, there's so much great like little comments that don't become like full blown. I, you know, like a lesser developer would have like, you know, Garrick on a tirade about all the people he hates and stuff like that. But all you need is like this little like sarcastic like quip, and I think it does more for the game's like world and the game's like story than like you know a monologue or you know something like that or an exchange that would take place would do for it. So, um, name free faults is just like uh, asking like also why are the hidden pathways lit? Makes no sense. Imagine the energy bill. I believe someone who has a house where you have to walk miles from one to room to another doesn't care. And back in the days, everything was cheap with energy. So, um, you know, um, I think th they didn't have to worry about that would be my impression. Because sometimes I wonder, like, the, the electricity bills must be so high because most houses don't even have light switches, you know? Well, something really interesting about the passages specifically is in... Um... Uh, in Gervasius' own bedroom, there is a pass-through passageway to who I, I assume it's his wife's bedroom or maybe the guest bedroom. I'm not sure. I don't actually know if Gervasius has a wife or not. But there's a pass-through to a second bedroom, and and I think there's some implications there as to what the passages are used for. Um, and if he has one from bedroom to bedroom, it kind of follows that he would have one from one room to another in the house as well. He just kind of seems like that sort of dude, and maybe he's just not fleshed out as well as he needs to be. But something I found very interesting about the, like, related to the energy bill is that most of the passageways have all of these, they have these pipes, and you could hear a sound throughout the mission. Like, I really liked the ambience. It sounds like a breathing air conditioner. And I'm like, okay, is this an air conditioned rich man's house? Is this like an, uh, a temperature controlled environment because it is also a museum. I just found that to be a really fascinating setup. Like it's it's I think for me it's storytelling without a readable. Um isn't that on uh Life of the Party where the four guards um are discussing over the rooftops and <laughs> Daniel Tron's character says uh And you will something like you will find yourself in one of the unnecessary ventilation systems. Um, uh, that <laughs> I, I'm just thinking of that. I, I don't know. I think they are just there for atmosphere. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's the show. Our show is about overthinking those stuff. So I, I don't know, but I think I, I like the sound as well. I think um, that it's used very often in fan missions as well. And I really, it's something I really got used to, and I really like the sound. Yes. Um, well, and I'm sure at this point, Amenel has made a one hour loop of it that we can just listen to when we're working. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, uh, yeah, by the way, great, great channel um, from Amenel. Um, going on uh, with Plutonia's comment. Of course. Uh, masks is just a great heist mission. Lots of all sorts of security to avoid. Encasing the place actually avoids a big problem of many stealth games, which is the players run around the level getting chased by guards so they can learn the level, um, so they can restart it and do it more stealthily next time. It's basically cheating, but Thief avoids it by putting casing before masks. Um, the ghost puzzle sucks, though. The player is supposed to figure out that the voices come from the books, even though they're the same voices in Return to the Cathedral, so players would assume it's just generic ambience instead of gameplay relevance. Okay. Um, with the second, I would agree, uh, disagree a bit, um, because they are very specific at that one place. You know, you, you can hear that it's, you know, in directional. So um, I, I would say it works pretty well, in my opinion. But yeah. I have a slightly different opinion. So 
I I solved the I don't I actually am not entirely sure what the resolution to the puzzle is, but I I got into the secret room where the bodies are kept. So I assume that's a resolution. Um so my problem with that area is that the the books all make ghost sounds and the ghost sounds are from the same stock it's not stock but the same the same source as the apparitions mutterings and mumblings right oh, and i'm just finding it on the stream that's very cool that we are just talking about that <laughs> what the heck so on night one on casing the joint um there is an apparition of one of the dead bodies that is hostile to garrett walking around the upper story of the library and that apparition is playing um the idle apparition noises so you can hear all the different layers of whispers and stuff and when you couple that with the the readables that emit ghost sounds like we know this is a ghost sound right it's it's intentionally used because at this point we have been taught this is what ghosts sound like in thief then you have a real ghost it's just a wall of sound that you can't it's so muddy you can't tell what is what and it just kind of feels disorienting like the ghost is all around you all the time and if you're not careful suddenly there is an actual hostile ghost killing you and like that sucks yeah, the um, ghost was annoying, you, especially since you cannot kill him. Well, if he's if you're trying to get help from someone, why are they hostile, right? Like, like one of the ghosts is asking for help and the other is angry. So, like, I don't know. I felt like I solved that on night one, and then I went back and solved it again on night two. I did the same puzzle twice. And on night two, there is no apparition stalking the library, and it was way easier for me to figure out where the books were and remember them. And, and not have the interference of a wandering wall of sound around upstairs. So I think in some ways it's a good design decision, and in some ways it's a very difficult decision to parse. What I found strange is that the library is just open. You know, I would imagine that maybe, you know, Gervasius is a bit aware of that something's going on there, and maybe then he would shut it down. Put a board over the door. Like there's some doors in the game that have like boards <laughs> over them, so you had to, to like not raise yeah. suspicion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but then you, if you need, wanted to open it, then you would have alerted the whole house. True, um, that wouldn't work in casing. Super sensitive. <laughs> that's true. That's true. In casing, though, with mass, that would be maybe fine. But since but, yeah, he has so many casing. secret passages, could there be a secret passage to the library? You know. So you can make, do it in Garrett style and find the secret passage, um, but um, yeah. So, Just imagining, based so, on the conversation earlier. Sorry, I was gonna say, based on the conversation earlier, that like. He Gervasius has just like a huge electric bill and just gets his electric bill and is like, "Why are we paying for all these lights that are like hidden in the wall?" Like, but um, but so. I wasn't sure if I saved it, but just finding the, the, the dead couple is like the solution to it. I thought there was more to it. I, I, well, I... there's so on night two, there's there's a there's a plot where the guy is he's the librarian and he's in love with one of the servants and they want to run away together. And there is another he he wants to get his position filled so that he can leave and vacate his certain like he wants to leave his indentured servitude and go somewhere else with this woman that he loves but he needs to replace himself and there's a competing librarian that he's trying to get hired to replace him and in the second mission you can find a readable um that that uh is basically the other librarian accepting the post and i think the implication is that the other librarian was jealous either of the post or of the romantic relationship and needed needed to get him out of the way um and so you i when i played i i picked up that readable and dropped it into the uh area with the bodies just to make him look extra guilty um <laughs> i know it didn't satisfy any objective but that's what i did yeah I, I know what you mean i seem to recall that there is there is some kind of objective on a higher difficulty related to that but it's been a long time since i've played it on anything above normal uh, and in this occasion, I did the playthrough on normal, so I can't verify or deny that. What would have been cool if you solve, you know, if you would actually help them in encasing the joint, if you choose to do that, and then maybe in the second run, then maybe the two bodies suddenly lay next to each other holding hands or something like that. Um, you know, that would have been something cool, um, uh, I would say. Um, bit creepy also, but 
yeah, so so Garrett's like, ah, I even helped them in heaven or whatever they believe in. <laughs> um, he's a non-believer, Garrett. So, in thief's heaven, just imagine a thief's heaven. You know where just thieves are living, and then they oh, steal the shit out of each other every night. Um, <laughs> Classic. It's no like, honor among it's, thieves. It's like in my hometown. It's a university city. And um, it's the city in Germany with the highest rate of um, bike theft um, per per in percentage to to this uh, the amount of citizens. And it's like really normal like that people go out of the club or something and then they just grab a bike randomly and it's like, oh, uh, I had this one last year already or something like that. Then they just put it in, you know, next to their apartment building. And maybe in the same night or next day, someone else is like, oh, I grabbed this bike. And then they go back to the city or whatever it's. Um, and he just needs to invest in public bikes at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think the Netherlands, I, I just saw a video some days ago that they had a thing like people were um, stealing bikes and then they made the, the people pay for to get it back. And, and it's now really normal. It's like just like a normal job, it's like steal the bike and bike get paid. It's, it's really interesting. But but uh, I'm distracting the whole thing. Life here. imitates art. Yeah, we did get a comment on the video. So um, Jason clarifies that uh, Ashton is Lorna's husband, and she cheated on Ashton with Giles. Ashton killed both of them and left. Ah, so, so they went the not guilty. Okay. So he actually had a reason to kill him. Yeah, see. But then I don't see. Wait, if I get that right, then I don't see why you know they did something wrong in first place. So it's like, yeah, of course, killing someone is not not a solution. But um, you know, he, he he was wasn't acting out of just of greed or something like that. You know, which would normally be the the case. But but now yeah. it's like okay, definitely gives it a little more depth. Yeah. Um. If I were Garrett, I totally believe in heaven. Since saving brother Murus, we never see the builder, but his rights to work. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I think we can go on with the next comment by Eminel. Um, it's a short one. My brief opinion, the missions are quite satisfactory, but they would be more exciting if an unexpected event occurred after Garrett steals the masks. He would need to swiftly devise a new escape plan, utilizing alternate routes such as ventilation shafts or sewers. Within these concealed pathways, he encounters a variety of new mechanist security devices uh, that he hasn't dealt with before. These advance... The devices present a formidable obstacle pushing Garrett to rely on his agility and cleverness to evade detection and secure his escape. Um, I would totally agree, um, because especially since it's close to the end, uh, I think this would make sense. Like, um, But I think there have been ideas. Do you remember, guys, this, um, this unfinished um, mission that wasn't put into the final game with that burning city, you know, where this... Uh, the dock, I think, is like the docks, something like that. Yeah, the factory I don't that at district. All. And, and they all and they they had like um, different um, mechanists, uh, children or whatever. So I think that would have been a really cool thing if suddenly like uh, something like that happened. But on the other hand, we discussed this already. Uh, this would also mean a lot of more work uh, to put into programming and stuff. Yep. Are you thinking of uh, the mission, the raid on Willard Slum or Square? Willard Square. It's in the slums. I don't know. I, I know. I remember a video of, um, and I think they wanted to rebuild it. You know, there was this project where they wanted to do like a thief to gold the fans. Yep. And uh, it's this. You know, everything is burning, and I think it, it, it would have added to the story and, and variety of the missions a lot. But oh, yeah, absolutely. something like that. Um, it, Otherwise, I thought when I read this comment, feels like Thief 2014, you know, like you do the job and then the games decides to, ah, oh, no, uh, fuck it up uh, anyways, you know, it's our plan and now you have to run. Yeah, it's not always fun, I think, as a player to play a game and then, like, it's nice to have twists and surprises, but it's sometimes nice to see a plan through, just like in real life. Like, when you plan it out, 
you do it, it comes through, it works. It's not always fun to be like, ha- like to kind of bait and switch the player all the time. And obviously, like, we could say it until we're blue in the face, but obviously they didn't have the time, budget, et cetera, blah, 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 for anything <laughs> additional in the game. But hypothetically, if they did have time to, like, put more stuff in the game, it's like, would you always want that in a mission where it's like you finish the mission and then the game's like, well, actually, you have to do this now to finish. Yeah. So unsatisfying, I think, as a player sometimes. And I want to quote a famous YouTuber and podcaster. They changed the moon. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I think, but in um, in this case, I think um, it's, it, I'm a, I have like two hearts in my chest for this. On one hand, it's like, yeah, it's cool. Especially you make this planning mission and then you execute it in masks um, and then it doesn't work. It's like, okay, thanks for nothing. Um, on the other hand, it's like, yeah, two times basically the same building. Um, then it would add some variety, you know. I think I think players would prefer that more. But yeah, I think it was too hard to do that in a short time. Yeah, this would have required a lot of work. But I think that an interesting way to have done this would have been to... Um, there's all those stationary turrets. Um, and I think that an interesting way to pay off casing the joint would be if there was a hidden readable in casing that reveals that the turrets are actually mobile and will become mobile robots once uh, a pressure plate is tripped. And then in you don't necessarily have to find it, but if you do find it, it gives you an advantage of being ready for it in the next mission, where when you pick up a mask, it trips a pressure plate, and suddenly you have twice as many robots to avoid, right? Like... That's not even an unfair twist. It's just like, okay, you have more obstacles to avoid. Show us what you got. Yeah, I, I agree. So it, 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 it sh yeah, and maybe it, it he, in in casing the joint, I was already like, wait, this this texture is way too blurry. You can just see it on the on the video. Um, I, I was a bit because I didn't remember what what will happen in in, in masks. Um, so I was like, wait, this this carpet looks really, really strange. And I was already a bit suspicious at that point. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, ugly. Um, I just find it amusing that Gervasius is willing to kill all the guests that are also presumably coming to see his heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> but isn't it like, you know, since it's not in full, you know, the thing is not running, the event... Isn't it? I think he will turn it off. But is, there's no way to turn those traps off, right? Uh, there is. Um, what do those levers do in the atrium? Correct. There's, yeah. There's a series of levers with colored lights. I think you can only have one carpet turned off at once, though. Exactly. Uh, that's yeah, what you it can't... was for. That would have been my, yep. one of my questions. Was like, wait, what? Okay, oh, this. What a stupid idea. Uh, they they could they had time for that. Ch changing the moon and building in this <laughs> this thing for that exactly. and this was, because i read it for and that point i read um uh, a walkthrough because i didn't know what these things are for the the lights the the switches and the walkthrough said yeah now and depending on the on the lights um it's like now the colored doors throughout the mansion are open and it was like running through the place like What what colored doors? So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that walkthrough was incorrect. Is, is my game bugged? Like, where are the colored doors? No, really, but why do you write something like that down? Like, that's completely like, that's completely wrong. Yeah, it's not even close to what happens. <laughs> no, there are no colored doors. <laughs> that's yeah, but this whole aperture is strange, and and I don't know. It's like you, you, just imagine. You know, he's having these easily easy access to all the camera switches and whatnot. You know, they are not really hidden or something. So, yeah, they are easy accessible. But then you make an apparition like that for your stupid little carpet switches. Um, I don't know. It's I, I don't know if they had the right balance uh, in what is what what is important <laughs> right now. Um, but hey. Who knows? Uh, what What do you guys think of this mechanic? Kind of a, a little bit annoying because you can only turn off one at a time. Then you have to keep going back, turn off one, turn off the other. I know you can also... Well, the first time I did the mission, I didn't understand 
like you were saying, Alex, I didn't understand how the switches worked. So I was like, what is this? I don't get this. So all I ended up doing was I shot a rope arrow into it and I kind of like almost like a Mission Impossible movie. Like I roped down from above, yeah. grabbed them, like reached down and grabbed them, then roped back up, which is kind of cool in and of itself. But then I found out, oh, I can turn off the gas, but it's like you have to keep turning it off, go to the room to get the masks, run back, you know. So there's a lot of like backtracking on the floor if you want to do it that way. I had so many health potions that I just walked into the room, bold face, snatched everything off of all the things, gas Garrett, and drank down my health potion. I did a different approach. I and I can we can see that in the video uh, later um, of masks. I always jumped on the platforms where the masks are on. So so I le so the there are those two not important just loot masks. Um, I grabbed them from one of them by going close to them then leaning over forward and then grabbing that one. Then I went to the middle, jumped onto the middle platform with that important mask. And then from there, I jumped onto the other um, loot mask platform. Um, that's how I did it three times. Um, and it was pretty, pretty annoying. Um, so, yeah. And and I felt, you know, the, the, the exhibition is not so close to this, to this uh, switch thing. Um, you know, it's like running back and forth. And even if I would have known, I think I would have, wouldn't have used it. It's a little bit of a walk to get, like you said, to get them back to the, the main room or the atrium where the switches are to the exhibition rooms. It's like a little bit of a hike. So it's definitely, um, it makes it, it just extends it, I think, a little bit. If you do it that way, it extends it a little bit longer to the point of like tedium. And Ekmir kind of said that in the chat is like, testing your patience for TDM ahead of Soul Forge. It's like, it's not quite obviously Soul Forge level, but it's kind of, you know, it's like, yeah, the backtracking definitely is a yeah and reminiscence. Every, everything looks the same, you know, the, the whole building doesn't have a lot of variety in its looks that they tried, like close to his uh, sleeping room, um, bedroom, um, uh, and stuff where those switches actually are. Then, you know, I think they tried to make this part a bit more interesting with this plant room, you know, and, but one question I have, the elevator, is it accessible? You know, there's the, you, you can call an olive elevator behind a door that I couldn't get to open. I, um, so the elevator, I smashed the door open. I actually couldn't find a button for the elevator. Could you, I, I couldn't smash it open. Knows. Oh, really? Oh, weird. I smashed it with my sword. I just smashed it. I, I, but I don't remember if I did it in casing or if I did it in masks. Maybe that's different as a mirror. Um, <laughs> uh, because I couldn't smash it open. You, you know, I love smashing it. You, I mean, the intro of our um, of our podcast is <laughs> smashing a door in. So I like that. But um, I couldn't do it. I smashed it in, in casing. And in casing, you can't ride it upwards, right? It just looks like a monster closet. In uh, in masks, yeah, in masks, I smashed it, and then I was like, I, the door opened, and I walked through it as it opened and fell down the elevator shaft. And I'm like, oh, this is how Garrett dies. Yeah. Uh, okay, but yeah, I couldn't get it to open. Uh, it's strange. But what can you ride the lift? Can you use it? I couldn't find a button for it. Maybe someone knows where the button is. I mean, you can call it down, but not up. So it's, yeah, there's, okay. Strange decision that they not, just not, maybe, why didn't they just delete it? You know? Well, they probably need to justify getting the robots up to the third floor. And they were like, oh, how would you do it without an elevator? So it might Of be course, with, and with, it, with the smallest door they could find for that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, maybe they can, maybe they take it apart and reassemble it on the top floor, all right? Yeah, and so they have to drag it through the whole thing there, you know. <laughs> yeah, those, it's just like a real job. That's something I really, really thought about very often, especially in this mission. Again, like the poor mechanists, you know, that have to really work, you know, um, and not just walk around in caves and uh, mm. s and hide in cathedrals. Um, they have to dr drag all those heavy, or maybe they have. Oh, name the servants, of course. They there would use go. their own servants, of uh, I think. Uh, yeah. So well, easy. Oh, no, I don't worry. I'm not worried about the mechanists anymore. Solved that. Um, yeah. No. But but yeah. I, I, the elevator was a mystery to me. Um, the bull. 
said on YouTube, not exactly a controversial opinion, but I don't think I've ever played anyone outside of Ubisoft collectibles that felt more like filler content. <laughs> Bold statement. Um, I, I think the comparison I, lags a bit, but what is your opinion? I actually wonder, just from like a game dev point of view, I wonder if they had a mission they were planning to put before masks and then they had to cut it because it wasn't finished. And if they were like, oh no, we have contractual obligations to have this many maps. Yeah. We need to fill this. That's my theory. I think they finished with... I think there's as many maps in Thief 2 as there is in Thief Gold, if I'm doing my math right. Yep. Yep, so, that is correct. So it's kind of like, well, you don't want to have less... You know, and they put out Thief Gold just a year, not even a year before, right? So it's like, well, we don't want to release the next Thief game and have it have less missions than the last one because then it's like, you know, it, that just optically like doesn't seem good to a consumer who just I don't just think is purchasing the game. I don't think that. Uh, so my only thought about that is I don't think one mission would have made the difference. If no, if, if it was a selling point, if putting I think it's thirteen, if putting thirteen missions on the box was a selling point that like their publisher wanted. And there was publisher pressure to exceed that number, then I totally get it. But honestly, I think it might have been more fun just to put masks in and skip casing and just call it done, you know? Well, no, of course, like from a tight design standpoint, but I mean, I think it, from like a consumer and like a advertising standpoint, like when you're showing the game off, like journalists and, you know, magazines at the time, which don't exist really anymore, unfortunately, but, you know, at the time, gaming magazines are super important. It's like, Oh yeah, like this is like a follow up, you know, to the thief we just did the year before, you know, or the thief gold that we just did. It's like, well, how many missions does this one have? It's like, oh, it has a couple less. It's like, it just sounds obviously there's with good reason. But, but they would have things... said, but of course we put more time into quality assurance of, you know, blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But you know how people are where they're like, the map is this, you know, games nowadays where like the map is five times as big as the previous map you know what i mean like it's kind of the push is always for more and more content not necessarily for better content although i completely agree with you yeah you, you might be right especially when thief gold or thief one wasn't the best seller um uh, it should have been uh, so maybe they had to go on everything like that um yeah i i i, I would agree but yeah it, it's it's strange oh uh there is not now it's uh, uh masks running on the stream um yeah but filler content uh, with, I, I think the comparison with the ubisoft collectibles is like a strange comparison i can see what he means but uh, i think it you know the filler content there is planned for reasons you know to stretch the game and not for reasons of um, existential problems, I would say. And, and uh, yeah, I think... Correct. It was it, yeah, the reason is they ran out of time. Ubisoft doesn't run out of time. They run out of... Oh, they creativity. at the moment, they are running out of time. <laughs> oh, that's true. Yeah, but before... Yeah, oh, they're, they're in trouble now financially, but have, before when they weren't. Have you seen their, their uh, live show? They... Uh, that was such an embarrassing thing in comparison to the Microsoft and EA and, and uh, showcases. Um, oh, yeah, you, you're you in trouble. It was like a town hall meeting, um, and it, it it was really embarrassing. Um, I didn't I see think, it at all. Yeah, they, they didn't get the memo that nowadays, you know, Microsoft's uh, conference was really tight, you know, game after game after game, because yep. they know people watch it in real life and they skip to the specific parts. They don't want anybody to talk minutes in between. And Ubisoft still does it like 10 years ago. Like, like there's still an E3 around, you know, like like a showcase live uh, in the theater, but um, or in a town hall as they did it. Um, it's yeah, <laughs> it was really strange. But um, yeah, back to... Hopefully not Eidos 2.0. Yeah. Then we got a comment by... Who's that? Eggmeyer? Um, Esamir? Um, Esamir, you, you one day have to tell us how to pronounce your name. Jason T. Ramke. Eggmeyer. Ek no, I don't... I would say Esamir. You know, Esamir is a common name. I think he answered us on the last stream, but I can't remember what he said. I think it was Ekmir, but he can correct us again. Ekmir. I like I like Ezemir. Ekmir, oh, he said, 
Really? I uh, why why don't you correct me? You know, I told since how many streams I say Azimir. Um, um, okay, Azimir um, uh, made a comment. Maybe one of you guys want to read it out. Sure. Uh, casing the joint is another example of an idea that is related to heist, not translating well to what is fun. Realism getting in the way. Sneaking isn't that hard. Part most of the the hard part most of the mission. I don't know why the third floor never got a clean up pass in development. There are thoughtful things like the floors in the exhibition rooms having a pit with the same carpeting as masks, as if to subconsciously get the player comfortable with the general appearance, while hinting at the false floor pressure plates of the masks. I wish solving the library mystery and casing persisted into masks, and that Philemon Abernathy, named for a character in Dorian Hart's uh, Heroes of Spira saga, could discover the bodies. Lorna's uh, last leveler in the library changes length depending on difficulty. That's actually cool. Um, alliteration, the only time this <laughs> happens in the trilogy. I should say, I'll do it. Lorna's last love letter in the library changes length. Alliteration. The uh, only one other time this happens in the trilogy, uh, the readable, not the alliteration, is down in the bone horde, where one readable has more information as the difficulty increases. That's interesting. I want a, I want a list of all the <clears throat> alliterations in the entire series from you, Jason. Um, he could do it. If anybody could, he could. What I wondered was like down in the bone heart. So actually, if you raise the difficulty, you get more hints. Did I get that right? I think that's correct. Okay. The that's letter. A strange the decision. letter is longer. Yeah, the letter is longer. So I don't. Hmm. Because I would I'm imagine on, which one. On, on expert they would give you less hints. You know, or maybe it's like like. I think uh, it's it's because you have additional objectives, so they have to give you hints for those additional objectives. Okay, down to the bone are the stupid anyways. Um, hey! <laughs> that's my scientific <laughs> argument here. Um, yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. But hey, uh, I think after Thief 2, <laughs> we make Thief Deadly Shadows. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that was an... In it's interesting. I, I didn't know that. And of course, I think you have to replay it in a certain you know, short time to actually remember what was written and try it on different difficulty levels so um but yeah that's uh, thanks for the insight egg mirror um <laughs> you know we should all be like alex's and seth's and jake's that's easier <laughs> well uh, i would say speaking of uh, uh adrian j says i would re really love to see that necromancer mission I think he's referring to the uh, Emil Pagliarilla mission that was supposed to be between casing and masks. It was Wake the Dead, I think, was that mission? I'm very happy that we didn't have that. It's actually pretty <laughs> amazing that those are two missions, uh, you know, in a row. Uh, isn't that great? <laughs> I, well, I, I guess, yeah, if, if the alternative is, is uh, I know you're not a fan of those type of missions all the time. So if that alternative is those two things, I can see why you would... Choose that. No, the, well, the Thief thing... One, Thief yeah. One shows that the city has a really awful problem with like pest zombies, <laughs> and yeah. then in Thief Two, you're kind of like, oh, what happened to this infestation we were dealing with? Is it just dealt with now? Uh, actually, with the mechanist beasts, um, you know, the metal beasts, I think this problem could have could, could be solved. Yeah, no, potentially, sure. but it does kind of seem like the Hammerites are are both the prob the the solution and the problem in that they're like, yes, we're blessed, we can get rid of the undead, but somehow their specifically their dead keeps rising. Yeah, that's that's, that's totally right. <laughs> yeah, um, no, but I I think that 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 would have been a cool thing, you know, like if the mechanists would get you know would free those lost places, you know, and then they could retake the old um, hammerite cathedrals and and you know make it their own and see it as a sign that like look the hammerites weren't able to save this place but we were here to, to rescue it so it's ours now look at us um just saying lost opportunity Karis. just saying um yeah we had another comment by anger i would say uh, it was on ttlg 
and they say casing and mask are horrifically unfinished and definitely poorly designed in places however they are far from exceptional in their issues the biggest issue is that they are back to back honestly if casing was remade set just set just after ambush with garrett trying to return to their job after being bothered by the watch and discovering mid-mission that the collection was not there or maybe have garrett's target be something that isn't the masks at all for example, a leading mask having escalated security, allowing for a harder mission in the same environment. That would have allowed the follow-up both to be significantly different in gameplay-wise and still had some space to breathe. Admittedly, the coincidence that Garrett just happened to rob him already might have been a bit hard to swallow. As it stands, though, that we are left with this one, slightly subpar mission, which you must play twice in a row, with no real variation between the versions. The library is a nice bit of variety in the mission and the general design does seem to like long corridors, but I don't really mind this. That said, the scale of the mansion does feel a bit silly when thought about it for too long. Had casing mask been an FM, I would have given it a solid 3 out of 10. Edit, side note, the gas traps in the mask rooms are hilariously broken and I honestly love them. Um, yeah. 3 out of 10. 3 out of 10 is like a death sentence for an FM. Like, I don't think I've ever rated an FM 3 out of 10. Um, oh, I oh we did. <laughs> Back in our um, contest uh, missions. Um, uh, it, but I don't think that this would have been a 3 out of 10 FM, I, I would say. I would say for an FM, people would say, oh, it's pretty cool, you know. Some fun ideas and free content. Yeah, and this transparent pipe was a Yeah, no, that, that transparent pipe wouldn't have been there because um, the, the beta testers would have uh, that that was would have been one of the first things J Root or uh, anybody would have like. Hey, wait, there's this. I think um, to his point, his comment. Yeah, it would have been a big coincidence to be like, I'm gonna go rob this mansion for the jewelry, and then he has to come back there for the mechanist. But stories are always filled with coincidences, like the right place at the right time. So it's one of those things that you have to suspend your disbelief when you interact with the work of fiction to realize that there's going to be a lot of consequences, like, or a lot of um, coincidences, I mean, to, for the story to happen. So I think you could just have that where he, that was my idea earlier, which I actually um, forgot about when I reread re your comment. I was like, oh, we have the same idea. But yeah, I just have it so Garrett's after something else and it's just like, oh, yeah, this is, uh, this is where the uh, exhibition's going to be, so. Yeah, I think... Um, he um, says a lot of things we already mentioned, or, um, or she. Um, yeah, 100%. But um, <laughs> I think I, I love this. I think that FM rating is a bit uh, unique, I would say, and I think would have been a bit harsh. Um, I remember when um, back in the days with Next and Psychosis, we did those contest missions, uh, episodes, that we were always like, ah, could you really, you know, there was maybe a really bad mission. Um, and we, I was like, like, yeah, I gave it a two out of 10 and the others were like, what? You cannot do that. You know, it's really harsh and hard. And then I sometimes, ah, okay, I go up two or three, uh, the, one or two numbers. Um, and it, so I think that um, anger um, wouldn't be very, very famous among the community um, if he rates that hard because people are very sensitive. Just yesterday, I was uh, watching a uh, German streamer, Garrett TMT, um, and he, we would, I don't know, we came, uh, someone was asking where Psychosis, you know, why he, he isn't on the podcast anymore because I was active in the chat. And then um, Garrett told us uh, when he read Psychosis, he was like, oh yeah, we we were discussing his missions a bit on the chat and then he was like yeah he didn't rate uh, one of uh, I th it was psychosis mission where is there's the transition between the hammerites and the mechanists taking over a pretty good mission um i think it was uh, thief 2 anniversary contest and yeah gary tmt didn't like it so much or he didn't like the gameplay 
and and psychosis um was not so happy so they had a long discussion about it and why and um yeah um it was interesting um i, I didn't thought that a psychosis would be like that I, I always thought he doesn't give a taff now we know everybody yeah. has different uh preferences for everything including missions yeah but three out of ten is pretty pretty harsh yeah everybody yeah you know i think um ambush maybe or um chasing the courier is like yep. maybe in that yeah. area i would say four yep, out agree. of ten but this one um uh, it, it's a five and six i would say yeah i would say yeah i uh, i don't want to skip ahead but there's a comment um snake's comment gets into it but i um kind of agree like i think mask is pretty good but I think because you have to do casing and both of them back to back, I think that decreases the quality of masks, even though I think like if you were to set masks again, something like we've been talking about somewhere else or um, having these missions split up. Why don't you read out snakes comment? Sure. Absolutely. Snake says, I was going to largely ignore casing because of uh, as part of this opinion as a real experience in masks, which like blackmail before it are both quintessential mansion heists, which influence many mansion fan missions afterwards. I like the ambient music, which is tense and atmospheric, but very cozy at times. There are many nice touches in the mission with hidden passages and library goes in the library goes subplot, which perhaps could have been padded out a bit further. A couple of issues unfortunately detract from mass overall reputation among the community, one being the aforementioned casing mission, which is in principle is an intriguing idea, but poorly executed. It ends up just leaving the player frustrated with having to essentially play the same mission twice in a row. The other mission, the other issue is that the rush nature design of the mission with some minor bugs visible in the final product and empty or unfinished areas. Overall, however, I think Mass is probably one of the stronger missions in Thief 2 and should be ranked in the top half of missions, but tends to rank near the bottom on many lists due to the casing mission preceding it, which is unfortunate. Very interesting, right? Mm -hmm. um, like how, how the opinions, like uh, one of the uh, higher rated missions, I would say it's in bo both of them. Yeah, Mass is, I agree, a bit better. Um, and maybe, uh, yeah, as we just said, like, uh, if, if casing wouldn't be mass, would maybe, um, the perception would be better in general by the people. But, um, I would say it's an average, both are pretty average. One is lower average and the other is higher average. Yeah, I, I would say I, I pretty much, I agree with his opinion. I think like I probably would put mass and like, you know, if I divided the missions up, and had like a median like and kind of what you said alex like i would put the uh you know masks up, up top and i would probably put uh casing down below personally well i think um casing it's it's like snake said in slightly different words casing just kind of washes out the value of masks like you have you have almost too long with this level. It overstays its welcome. Yeah. And like, too much of a good the... thing. Well, it's not even that it has to be too much of a good thing. It's just a good thing turned into an okay thing by exposure, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I also think, too, and I think we, another commenter mentioned this earlier was um, I think being able to, I think it was Plutonia. Yeah. Plutonia mentioned in, in their comment, like, I think if you, ha if you could get up to the third floor in casing, then it would be make more sense although i mean one of the things i guess in masks like we were talking about earlier how undercover versus strange bedfellows how strange bedfellows has you know differences like you can go underground things are destroyed i guess the only thing equivalent to that or one of the only things is that like in casing you really i think you can get up to the third floor but there's nothing there so why would you but just, in mass you get to the third floor I just thought um, while grabbing me a drink, um, I thought like because we discussed that earlier that it's maybe a filler mission and they maybe wanted to have those uh, 50 missions. I think it would have been way better if they needed um, um, a reused mission. And now we come back to Life of the Party. We discussed there that um, the question, if it would have been even better if like the city would have been one level so the city level would have been even bigger and then angel watch would have been its own mission and then using the city which is 
way more interesting, you know, as an extra mission again, but now you have to go back and now things changed and stuff like that. Um, I agree with that. I think that's an excellent uh, point is if they already had a giant city asset that they didn't reuse, they could have just cut the brushes from Angel Watch and closed that area off. Yeah, but of course, then they needed to build uh, uh, Angel Watch specifically, and we know that they, you know, already had like um, levels, and then they put everything together uh, in the story and and um, to the setting. Um, but still, I, I think if if the, just you know if if those problems wouldn't have been there, I think this would have been the better reuse. Uh, of a city mission, you know, they reused the city already to, uh, twice at, at the beginning of, of, of the game, um, which is actually, yeah, you, you know, Thief 2 has, in my opinion, some of the most memorable missions in the original series, but also I think it has the worst missions in the series, uh, from, talking Thief 1 to 3. You yeah, know, in, in, I am in, in the in the masses. You know, I think every game can have its one or two, but Thief Two, you know, besides the highlights, is pretty meh, mediocre sometimes. Yeah, I think overall, hmm, I'm trying to think. I think some of the lows of Thief One are pretty low, but I think like definitely, I think it has like the highest highs of the series. Like, I don't think any missions in like Deadly Shadows can top like Life of the Party or Blackmail or First City Bank, or Shipping and Receiving. Like, those missions are just classics. But yeah, there is some, like, I would just say meh, like, missions. I feel like the bad missions in Thief 1 are, like, they experimented and tried something different, and it just is, like, doesn't quite click. But the missions in Thief 2 that are bad are just, like, I think it's, like, a different kind of bad. It's, like, experimental, tried something new bad, versus, like, bleh, uh, you know, bland, <laughs> like tasteless kind of bad if that makes any sense yep i, I totally agree and, and since the um the architecture in thief 2 was a bit more normal and and not as artistic and and uh, crazy um you know the variety um of course uh, i think many people just uh, criticize thief 2 for that i actually like it but um st but still the variety in general is not given so much and then reusing like a brown building um is yeah i i don't think the best idea um but they didn't have the time they didn't have the money and you can excuse <laughs> everything with that i we, would have we need we need a that. we need that on a clip we need that a clip like just to play yeah, soundboard. like the time money thing yeah like just like <laughs> yeah, do it up like just play it like no time no money i mean it's funny because like when we talk about the first and the third games that's not quite as true but definitely with the, the third game it's Really we, true, and we would make, second game. I mean, we would make Seth very happy because was it? In, it was not too long ago where you interrupted me with your stupid soundboard idea, and then you played it, and um, I was um, irritated. You were, by that. Yes, you were and enraged. I was really angry at that moment, and then I tried to keep it professional. Um, of course, it didn't work because Azamir on Reddit called me. No, was it as Ekmir? Sorry. Uh, once someone on Reddit called me after the last episode, um, uh, an, an angry old bastard or something like that. <laughs> um, because uh, I just I didn't like the mission, <laughs> Lost City stuff. Yeah, such is life. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a I'm not an angry grumpy. I'm grumpy old bastard. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, no, uh, but uh, yeah, Seth. You want to go on with what was it? What comment you wanted to react to? Uh, Matei Probelski. Okay. If that is correct. So I'm going to read this aloud. So, firstly, a compliment to Alex's shirt. Um, oh. The best. Yes. Thanks, thanks, thanks. One, one more on the, on the tally. Um, Mate says The best I can say about casing the joint slash masks is it's the most tolerable for me from the last four missions bullshit fest of the Metal Age, especially since the map itself is quite fine. I think that's a really interesting take in that, like, I actually, I don't think it's the most tolerable from the last four missions. I think Kidnapped is, is superior, and I think Sabotage at Soulforge is superior. I think Masks is fine. Ooh. Okay. 
you know? Like, I think that kidnap is like, I don't know. I know that you have uh, very specific opinions about the Lost City that I don't share. So I found kidnap to at least be interesting from a story level of like, ah, yes, the Lost City's been exhumed. And like, theoretically, even if the mechanists disappear, there will be a higher awareness of it going forward. Um, so that has interesting implications for the world of Thief. Um, casing feels like filler. I think we all mostly agree. Um, to to a greater or lesser degree, we agree. Masks is, is fine. It feels like a solid FM. Maybe not the best FM by any means. Um, but I like, and I'm going to say most of my opinions about it, Sabotage at Soul Forge much better than I like either of mass or casing so i just find that a hard statement to agree with uh i think the problem is i um you can ask like three people and get four opinions on what is the <laughs> what is the least worst mission in the in the at the end of thief um for different reasons um you know my grumpy re um, opinion on on kidnap but um and and i think I would have agreed a while ago, but since my last replay on Expert of the last mission, I kind of liked it somehow. Um, I think because thanks to the podcast, so I had to force myself through missions on contests and stuff I normally wouldn't play. Um, so I'm a bit tougher now. So I did it and, and felt more comfortable with that. Um, so I would agree, Seth, that uh, it's the, the, the final mission is better on the other i can see it's you know it's even more boring in in its visuals and stuff and um has some yeah it feels like they they just dropped um, metal beasts all over the place um to stretch it a bit and you know i think every of those missions has its has some big flaws and and i think you can just like what what is in your opinion the least uh flawed mission in, that's that's how i see it uh, uh, jake what would you think yeah i think um i think it's a kind of a case almost like what i was talking about earlier where like when we're talking about like the thief one lows versus the thief two lows it's almost like sabotage like does try to do something different especially compared to not to get all into sabotage because we'll get there but like sabotage is more experimental and is trying to be a big grand finale and being a big climax of the game Whereas, like, Masks, and I think this was mentioned in a comment earlier, but, like, Masks is, like, another kind of mansion robbery. Or, like, what we were saying at the beginning of the show, like, we did we did kidnap, right? So we're going back to the Lost City, and it's kind of, you're underground in the ruins. And, you know, we're doing all these missions, kind of, you know, we're doing uh, Precious Cargo, so we're, you know, we're in a new area, we're in Markham's Isle, and then we finally come back to, like, what would be like the bread and butter of thief, you know, ideal or, you know, at times, which is mansions, you know, you know, estates, lords and stuff like that. So I think it's cool. Like I, I like that the last mission before the finale is a mansion rob, like a, a mansion heist type mission, because I think that's very much like what a lot of people think of when they think of thief, they think of uh, the sword and, you know, um, what is the first Baffords and stuff like that. So it's good to have one of those. But yeah, I think I, I would say masks like just, you know, kind of for the moment, I think masks is probably my favorite of the last four. But Soul Forge is trying to be a climax, do new things and kind of be the finale also that the first game's finale wasn't, which was a true test of your stealth skills. So I have the feeling now that you just mentioned it, like maybe they were like, oh, wait, we cannot go all, all the way down uh, to the end with all those dark and KV uh, missions. So we need some, you know, um, we need some of those uh, overcorrected. Yeah, some people said like uh, that, like Thief 2 is like, oh, we had that on the chat yesterday in the community chat, I think it was, um, that where Brethren and Random Taffer were involved, um, that they said like, uh, it's Thief Two is a bit overcorrected uh, according to the feedback that people they got from from Thief One, so now everything is not as exciting in in the vari variety and and the architecture, um, and I could imagine that they were like oh shit we are going in that direction again so we have to add 
some more calm, more um, down to earth mission here again. You know, we've been to the lost city. You know, we we did a huge mistake. Let's correct it. Um, and they didn't succeed so much. Um, yeah, there could be many reasons. Um, if Tim Stelmark or would answer me finally, then maybe we could find out stuff like that. Um, That'd be a good episode. <laughs> of course it would, but he's unreachable for me. Even Daniel mm. Tron couldn't help me. Uh, unfortunate, but we'll yeah, I mean, I think we'll I think we talked about this before. We did our, I think we talked about this. We did our gold missions like way back in the day. It's been so long now. Um, but I definitely prefer the second game. But I definitely agree with what you said earlier, Alex. Like, um, I think that yeah, there's some just absolutely just like forget it. the missions, the bad missions in Thief One. At least like you won't forget them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you'll remember them. But the bad missions in this game are like. Oh, I forgot this was even in the game. You know what I mean? Like and since they, following they the courier, re, and since they reused, um, you know, levels two, two times. You know, like like mask encasing the joint and ambush and chasing the career, which have been one of the most mediocre missions. Um, you know, it's even harder to to remember certain things because it's the same environment, um, and without any big changes. Um, you know, I'm already not really show what was now in mass and what was encasing the joint um and yeah it's 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 strange um so, but they had their reasons i think uh one uh, of the comments was from nemfrey folson thief one experimental we don't know yet versus thief two here we did all we could and i think this describes it pretty well or at least yeah you get the much, feeling yeah yeah for sure i think um I think with the, yeah, it's, you know, and also how far they could go with their engine and with their technology, because it wasn't, you know, in some ways, based on what I've understood and read about the development, it was, you know, with the sound propagation and the some of that things and the lighting and stuff, it was super, like, advanced for 98, I feel like, but then in other ways, it was maybe a little bit behind the times, even for, like, 98, which I know 98 is when the first game came out. I knew they did some engine enhancements for the second game, but, um, you know, they're a little bit behind, a little bit ahead with the technology. So, um, Nemfrey Fulton just asked on the chat, what part of city masks as is you would like to see again in another mission? Because in my opinion, there's really little to nothing worth preserving. Both missions wreak laziness in his opinion, uh, or her, their opinion. Um, I, it's a point. I can't think. I can't think of anything that I would want to see in another mission either. It's like it's kind of bland. I like the um, I like the number of secret passageways, and that like I like the idea of using the secret passageways as a mechanic, but they're not really that useful since they mostly are placed behind rooms that guards never enter into. So, like, you can circumvent the main halls and avoid long patrol routes, but there's little reason to actually duck into the passageway to escape a guard in most cases. So, like, I don't know. I would like to see secret passages used better. Um, and I always like museum missions where there's, like, an explanation of the artifacts. I think that yep. leaves a lot of room for, you know, thief lore. Wait. So that those would be my two. Just where you mention it, um, I think um, the way his secret passages are made you said that very early already on on the episode but uh you know he has like it seems like they go from very not not very important places or guest rooms and stuff where it's like as you said at the beginning like wouldn't it make more sense to connect important rooms together you know like between the bedrooms or i think it's his office and the bedroom um there's a secret passage where you can just uh you know, just click the wall, I think it was. Um, but th this is like, okay, why would he need that? But, but you know, there's no really important thing like where he could sneak easily from the library to his um, uh, to his apartment rooms and stuff. Um, it, it, I think it's really strange. Um, or not, not thought thing, out. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, it's kind of, it's a little bit... Uh half-baked but one of the things i like about this mission is i really like climbing the beams on the third floor it's like i was mentioning earlier like you know mission impossible and down to get the uh 
get the mask. I thought that was cool because that was something where like I didn't have to do it that way. Again, strength of thief, right? Like doing emergent things, uh, immersive sim type emergent gameplay. Like that was cool. And I liked walking across those beams in general because I like I felt really like sneaky walking above like the the uh, the the mechanical uh, creatures and the uh, guards. Like I'm like oh I'm above them and I'm like I'm like I'm walking slowly tiptoeing on this beam. Like I thought that was cool. I mean that's not I mean that's something I, I, verticality. This mission has good verticality for an indoor mission at times. Um, I liked climbing above like the. Uh, what do you call it? The displays in like the the main room, like the ballroom or whatever you want to call it. Like that's another part where you can climb the beam and then lower yourself down. And so yeah, for an indoor mission, it has pretty strong verticality, which I like. Um, one thing that I found really impressive um, was you know very often you can see a secret passage. Of course, in the library you can because the texture of the object is slightly different. So uh, actually, I found the secret. A passage there um, during the uh, by, by just watching um, closely, but um, I was impressed that the other passageways that open into the walls that you cannot really see them if you don't know that they're there. So they made a really awesome job with the texturing there because in in, in many other occasions and then fan missions as well you can literally always see oh there's a secret passage the wall looks slightly different the texture is a bit more meh. Um, but here they did a really great job. I don't know uh, if that's from the Thief Fix, but I think it's uh, still from the original, if I'm right. I often just walk around testing things with my sword to find out if they're doors. <laughs> yes, that's... Uh, yeah, I, I use the blackjack. It's faster. Um, just a pro tip. Um, no, uh, but I th still think it's pretty impressive how they implemented it. You know, that you can really... You, if you don't know it's there, you can't see it in my opinion. I had a pretty easy time seeing where some of them were. There are others that are quite hidden. Like, um, they're well blended with shadows and stuff, so it makes it a little more difficult, but there were some that I could I could suss out. Oh, yeah, I'm Seth. I could see it, of course. Um, <laughs> no, just kidding, because I was actually with my deep like, eyes. Because I, th I just saw, like, on the gameplay when I was watching it, here and there, it was, like, opening and closing the doors, like, oh, and then just looking at it, like, wow. Um, but the wh what I found strange is that those entrances are pretty tight sometimes. Sometimes I couldn't even get through it. Did you have the same problem? Yeah, there's a couple I that I got stuck in. Yep. Yeah, there, they're not there, wide enough. There's one close to uh, a camera. And this was really annoying because I wanted to slip through there f very fast with a body and then I couldn't get through and then the camera saw me um, several times. Um, but we had another comment by Ritnar Tim. <laughs> oh, those names. Um, Jake, do you want to read that out? Absolutely. We are doing... Wait, I lost... Oh. A written art. Uh, towards the yeah, bottom. I, I found it. I think as a concept, the first time I played the game, I really liked the idea of a mission where you can't have any interactions with guards at all. Frame did it better, though. And I have to map out the... And you, you have to map out the level yourself, as I imagine is the same for most first-time players. My approach at the time was just knock everyone out. However, in practice, casing the joint is a pretty boring mission since they designed it around being more or less ghostable, while mass is more interesting... It's kind of ruined by coming right after casing. So as a result, both missions kind of suck. And also now I feel more or less... <laughs> now I'll, now that I more or less ghost everything anyway, casing the joint loses the uniqueness of that mechanic too. Add to the fact that both missions are clearly the most unfinished in the game with extremely bare rooms and hallways, loot haphazardly scattered around. There's so many tiny coins in random places in these levels. And you easily have the absolute lowest point of the game, in my opinion. I will say that I like the fixing the clock objective and that you have to listen to a conversation about it and figure out what to do with figure out what to do with it from a fairly fairly subtle hint. Uh yeah, I think he sums up a lot that we already had. I, I think he has a point if you ghost anyway, then of course this is but but I think you cannot criticize the mission for that because back in the days there was no ghosting scene like like today or or like like the honor among Teffers. But he has a point with all oh, those tiny coins everywhere. That was so annoying. Yep. Yeah. Um, you could see on my gameplay, like, um, 
I was running around like and checking every table because you knew oh, okay at least one table in every room has coins on it. It was yeah, but, just click 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 on every table, and, and they're so small to see and hard to see too. You're just yeah, clicking around for dark coins. brown, and then you know thanks to the texture they appear brown as well. But I think this also indicates that maybe it was like oh we need loot on this mission. Uh, can someone please drop like forty uh, uh, coins uh, throughout the mission and um. That maybe I could imagine that it was even the case. Yeah, it's pretty lame. Uh, also, it doesn't make sense from a story standpoint because you're like, all right, we're going to get the house ready for, you know, the exhibition coming up yeah. and everybody make sure to leave your change everywhere across the table. <laughs> like, Yeah, for, like, for a collector, Gervasius seems pretty opposed to a purse. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was really annoying. But on the other hand, you know, there haven't been many shelves and stuff, so there w was not much where they could put things on, you know. Um, it, it's it's strange. Um, yeah, but but I think the, he has a point. Like, the whole mission seems unfinished. But I also would say, just looking at the stream, um, there's this uh, unnecessary contraption um, with those colors. Uh, I think maybe they even had a wrong focus on it. Yeah, also, I think it also would have been better. Someone had this idea, like, and he, you know, he, but we have to put loot in it. No, I want my coloring machine. I made a concept yeah. for it. Okay, you get it. Yes, we have the colored gas. But I, I think also, like, I wish you could turn off all, I mean, I guess you wouldn't maybe put them all in the same room, right? You may put them in different rooms. But when you turn it off, it's off and it's gone. Um, like it, instead of having to come back, you know, turn this one off and stuff like that. So I think if you would have had them, instead of all putting them all in the, the this room right here, the atrium or whatever, take each of these gas machines or switches or whatever and put them in different places in maybe the whole mansion even, which would give you more of a reason to explore some of these empty rooms. Yeah, maybe or, one of the secret passages. Yeah, exactly. Where would you know if? Because it's kind of weird if you think about it. Like, okay, we have this gas that secures these rooms. Where are we going to put them? Outside the bedroom. <laughs> like, yeah. you know what I mean? The switch is outside, literally right outside the bedroom. Like, I'm watching your footage right now, Alex, and it's just like, the switch is literally, like, right next to the bedroom. Would you put, like, a switch to control the deadly gas outside of your bedroom? Probably not. And so, guarded, and, and, and it's guarded by one guy. Um, one guy, yeah. And, and what I also think, like, he's this rich man. He has this huge building, but the use of space in this whole building is so strange. And then you know, he doesn't ha even have an, an attic or a basement. Um, and then, yeah, he, he puts it, like, in his most, you know, his living area, um, you know. And then there you would put this ugly contraption. Or on the other hand, maybe as a collector, maybe he's proud of having something like that and he wants to see it every day, you know. Those uh, strange guys um, have a different taste, maybe. But yeah, it's they have many been many strange decisions. Um, and I didn't know why couldn't you open the passageway in masks here. Um, and what I didn't like in masks is all the closed doors. You had you, you had to lockpick everything. That was pretty annoying. To but, make oh. tension. Does the building have a kitchen? uh yes there is a kitchen it's ah, on yeah the, yeah yeah the right floor. yeah but it's but, also the loudest freaking room in the whole place because it's I like hated huh. it. <laughs> but i think like the, that triggered so many guards in that room especially yeah and then the you masks. have this, this pool area and um i think the whole building doesn't look very livable i would say no it's like that's like I, somebody comment, commenter mentioned earlier, like that this one and like Truett's Mansion and Blackmail are like quintessential mansion missions. Like I put Truett's ahead of this one by a good bit because his like seems like it's a more of a realistic place. It's a little bit smaller, but it's tighter and like everything has like a purpose in that one. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's more believable. You're like, okay, here's his kitchen. Here's his dining room here's the ballroom here you know even though i know it has like some goofy mechanist crap in it but it's overall like something you can imagine somebody living in yeah this mansion definitely is like it's very boxy like it's a big square and the hallways kind of don't quite make sense yeah and that's and, not this typical hey on, you have the lower area for the servants and stuff and where the kitchen everything is 
Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to see as an as an as a rich guy. And also, you know, he's a collector. And I don't know. I have seen more art in, in Baffert's. Uh, oh, he's actually close friends with Baffert's. He's actually saying um, how amazing the trips are, Baffert plans, uh, the hunting trips, uh, which was nice, I think. Um, and also was what I liked about that is for once, it's not like a, you know, oh, in general, I don't like this guy. And, you know, um, so he was just honest, like, hey, yeah, Buffett's a good friend and he really organizes great hunting trips, you know. And, and then there was another note. It says like, oh, this time I didn't, um, I think it was a diary. This time I didn't hunt every, anything, you know, I didn't kill anything. But hey, on the next trip, uh, it will be better or something like that, you know. It, he seems very positive, actually, which I kind of liked. It was a change uh, f of, um, no, but, but yeah, the whole thing is like, who would want to live there? Yeah, it just is kind of, it's very, yeah, because I think about this mission, I think back on it. One of the things I think about is how just square and boxy it is and like how like the hallways like don't quite make sense like why are they that long for these rooms that are so empty like it's very yeah, it's uh it's definitely a cut below uh Ramir basically i think it's i want to say it's maybe the weakest mansion mission but it's definitely weaker than Truard's and Bafford's and Ramirez's and Constantine's which is you know oh, Ramirez mansion is ugly as hell it's ugly, but I think it like it the layout. Sense. I think is better. Yeah, yep. it makes more sense. Yep. Yep. I, it is ugly. Though. Yeah, and then here you suddenly have this room with two trees in it, and that's what I didn't get. Like, wouldn't the mechanists at first try to get rid of all those plants, and then there's the servant running around? Oh, oh, maybe. Well, no, they, they. I think that is actually a picture they want to create that a mechanist is running through nature here. Well, I think the reason why Gervasius is... They, they wouldn't want to get rid of the nature because the nature is a catalyst for the rust gas, right? When it makes contact with nature, it, it has a compounding effect. So for Gervasius to have a solarium with trees in it is actually beneficial to their plan to destroy everything. But he doesn't know that plan, does he? No, he doesn't. He doesn't know that plan, but it's part of Karis's plan. He's like, ah, yes, the nobles with their big gardens will make great catalysts for destroying the city. <laughs> If I put a servant in all their households. Yeah, and, and I think they, they wanted to create this picture, like there's the servant among the nature garden room, whatever. Um, I think this is maybe some kind of foreshadowing already um, in their heads. I don't know. Or maybe they just, just needed an NPC to put there. Um, uh, Adrian J had a good idea. He said, um, I think the mission would have been profited from changing up the layout a bit more compared to First City Bank and Trust. Lots of variety, for example, very different security systems. I think that would have been cool. Like a uh, randomized uh, camera placement, maybe uh, mm. robot placement as well. I mean, I think it would have given it some variety a little bit. Yeah, I would agree. Speaking I mean, it's harder, I think. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I think it's harder with this mission, though, thinking about it, playing devil's advocate to Adrian and also myself, is that, like, this mission is, because it is very, like, square-like, you go, it's, I don't know, like first city, you can kind of, I'll go through this room and then go through this room and take an alternate route. So there's ways to bypass some of those heavy security rooms. This one, it's like, if you go down a hallway that you have to go down and there's like three cameras and turrets there, it's going to be hard to, I think it'd be hard to randomize because of this, the way that the map is laid out, but maybe not. I'm sure there's a way you could do it. Um, speaking of Adrian J, Seth, you did some preparations. I sure did. Would you like me to read it? Yeah, so Adrian uh, contacted me and wrote me an email with a link to his article. And the article is in the description. It's German. And he had an... I think I described it at the beginning of the episode already, right? Um, uh, but, but yeah, yeah he, he, he made an interesting article about um, uh, atmosphere uh, and uh, used the examples of Hitman and Masks and Thief 2. And yeah, uh, Jake, you you was were so kind to translate and get the gist of it. And uh, yeah, it's really interesting. So guys, translate it for yourself, the whole article. But Seth, here you go. Sounds good. Um, so I, the abstract that the article is making almost seems to imply that uh, Adrian actually thinks that Masks is kind of an... Um, 
a, a good use case for what immersive sims are trying to be. So I will read um, uh, the way that Adrian defines... Um, Adrian's using another person's definition, but this is what they cite. Immersive sims are characterized by violent conflicts, the outsider role of the character, and spatial complexity of the environments. Spaces are designed in such a way that you often have multiple routes through them, uh, such as ducts, ducts, doors, puzzles, etc. So first of all, um, like we're making the case that like uh, an immersive sim needs to have these things in order to fit the definition. So then there's a section under uh, a later part of the essay called, and I love this title, Ecstasies of a Hallway in the Thief 2 Level Masks, which is a fantastic translation. Um, I don't, I, I would love to know, like, how that, uh, how that reads in the, in German, but in ah, English. Okay, yeah. he, he read it in a very, uh, he wrote it in a very nice, beautiful German. Uh, you know, I love the German language. Um, and he, yeah, it's a more an academic view. Of course, it's an, uh, it's an article like that. And uh, it's written really beautiful and really hard for, uh, even Germans to understand, I would say. That's funny. I just really love the way that translated. So what it, in that section, um, I have basically taken the longer essay and condensed it. And so this is my condensed version. Adrian can correct me if any of this is incorrect. So starting with uh, my extrapolation from this. Masks has many gameplay aspects that are concentrated on relatively few objects. So you're looking for a cultivator and, and masks. The second floor of the mansion can be reached in a variety of ways, including a secret, a secret staircase that players must find uh, in the same place as casing the joint uh, as part of a preparatory mission. Um, this path serves as a starting point for the second mission. The main hallway in the southeast corner of the second floor of the building has multiple routes and exits. The hallway is three times the height of Garrett, and the room can be walked through in, very f in, in a short amount of time, a few seconds. But it's much wider than the player character. If you were alone in this area, movement would be easy. However, there is a patrolling robot that walks almost the entire length of the corridor, and it's accompanied by a security guard with a bow and together they occupy half the width of the entire corridor. The robot is there to make the hallway look smaller than it actually is in relation to the character, uh, and the hallway is decorated with warm tones uh, and has a quiet droning ambience, whereas the robot is loud and stomps about and has cold tones. So I think that's already an interesting comparison. The hallway is warm, the robot's cold. Um, the hallway tells us about its owner, uh, materials like marble and wood, uh, which could be stand-ins for nobility and tradition, respectively, are in abundance. Um, so there is a narrative reason for the hall to be the size that it is, a narrative reason for the hall to look the way that it does. Um, the robots and security guards tell us that Gervasius is rich enough to employ both and, and doesn't have to dispense with anything. Um, and it's our job to circumvent these enemies to get the mass and the cultivator. Uh, and this area offers multiple routes, right? So there's a puzzle. Um, there is the area above the vents. or no, They're not vents, but like there's the rafters, I'm going to call them, above the hallway that allow you to circumvent the guards and go directly into the rooms. Several people have already mentioned that they felt really smart because they got to use those to suspend themselves above the objectives and, and grab the mask and escape. Um, and and both of the enemies that are present in the area are ranged, which makes them more dangerous in a corridor setting. So the enemies justify the corridors as well as the corridors justify the enemies. Um, and, and the best solution, of course, to this puzzle is to just avoid all of it altogether and use rope arrows, as some people have said. So I think it's interesting that somebody actually used this level as a case study um, compared to the definition of an imsim and is making the case that mass actually is a textbook imsim level um perhaps more so than some other levels in thief and that's not really what a lot of us have said at all right like most of us have complained about it and been like ah this one kind of sucks but i mean if you take adrian's essay and and you read it it's kind of hard not to not to agree with them but i would say you know, uh, first of all, uh, thank Adrian. And I think 
it's a really interesting article. So guys, uh, translate it and read it full. Um, I think, but of course he, um, you know, uh, turns a blind eye, I would say in that case, to uh, where the mission is in the story. Um, and of course, I would say general gameplay in comparison what thief what what is possible in thief, you know. So he just has very a very academic um, or I would say scientific way of looking at certain things, and um, and I think that he's right on those perspectives perspectives, and this is just an example I would say. On the other hand, I would I would wonder if those things he describes were intended actually because it's like interpretation of art you know like maybe uh, you know maybe, maybe da vinci just uh, painted his favorite you know his best uh, uh, friends with benefits you know <laughs> and that that's it and we do interpretations of the mona lisa like you know that that haven't been thought of uh, by da vinci yeah that's true so so I, very true and especially if we look at the mission how rushed it seems you know if i i wonder if they really had this intention of like putting you know putting the 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 metal beast there to you know to to make the the hallway look smaller uh you know um or if it's just like okay we need a harder enemy here for gameplay reasons you know well, I think it could also be like when you're designing a mission, you might know the enemy assets that you have to work with and just be like, oh, well, the metrics dictate that this needs this much space to walk and I need to leave space for the player. So it could actually be that the hallway is adjusted to accommodate the enemy, not vice versa. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, Adrian just said um, the reason for my choice, basically, because there's a lot of gameplay with the marble tiles, usage of wooden beams, light, light shadow. So... Yeah, so I, I, I can see, you know, that the mission, since it's pretty basic, you know, from what you need to do, um, like, you know, it's 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 a it's just a mansion. It's it has the usual enemies like sound um, and light, you know, and and um, then the story of yeah, telling you via the, the level that he's rich um, and stuff like that. So I think it's a very interesting take on it um and i would agree from you know just that point of view but it just works when you don't think of uh, maybe the circumstances of development and where the missions are put in the game and how bland they are sometimes you know that's my opinion on that but i don't know jake what do you, you think yeah i think in general like as i'm thinking of this mission too and i had i'd have a chance to uh, translate the full article yet but i have I was reading a little bit of it earlier, and of course, I know sometimes things are lost in translation. But I thought it was really, really good, really, really well written. Like at least, like from a you know translating it from German to English. But you, um, you know what I said to him? You know when I said I, I would will translate it, I said it now. Um, I was like, ah, it's a real shame to put this real, real great written German text into this um, farmer's language now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well it's not even just like what language it's like when you translate things through software right especially like things are going to get lost in translation through software because like the software is going to be like oh you meant this and then like it might get you close but I, you know and i'm sure you know this too because you're yeah. you know you speak multiple languages like sometimes like a direct translation a literal translation of something is not the best way to put it sometimes you have to take it and kind of rephrase it if to get the exact meaning i just said that yesterday when i watched that german stream and he plays on german which is always mm -hmm. a brain tap for me um and then it says you know you know in, in, in english it says safe successfully i think it was mm -hmm. and they directly translated it in to it's it's called speicherung erfolgreich no one would speak like that no one would say, say that, you know, uh, but it, it, I read it and it was like, okay. Um, and then, then, I, then I said, H -h 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 hilarious um, successfully. Um, be yeah, because nobody would speak like that. But um, exactly. But uh, sorry, Jake, uh, you wanted to go on. Oh, no, I was going to say, yeah. I mean, I think um, I, I really like, you know, I, I really like this mission. I think overall, actually, like, I mean, kind of tie into the article and kind of what some of what he says, like I do, I think overall I enjoy mass. I'm probably 
in the camp that's high or on it. Although, like I said, kind of said a couple of times, I don't think it's the strongest mansion uh, heist uh, mission, but I see some of his points in the article. And uh, I don't know, like I see certain screenshots of the mission, like the one he has in the article. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, this is like, I like, I don't know. It brings me positive feelings when I see like, you know, some of the pictures that he shows. Whereas like, if I see a picture of like, trailing the courier or tracing the courier or whatever it's called i'm like uh like no i'm not you know what you know it might have been a great way to work this into the story and not make it bad i think if this had been the second mission in the game right after the basso tutorial if you stripped out all the bad security and casing and just had a mission where garrett steals a bunch of viable masks he hears about Later on in the plot, you could have very easily just had Victoria been like, we need one of these masks. And Garrett could just say, I know where to get one. And then that's it. <laughs> I'm so lucky they got Stephen Russell and not you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know how to get one. <laughs> just, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dude, we uh, need to you, redo. you actually we do great impressions of uh, many characters of the game we need to redo oh, the you. game with like and give garrett the silliest voice possible it's like, all just me the... it's all just me i'll no, do no, every like, character in the game just you just give him the most ridiculous voice that you can think of seth and just like completely but Garrett? just do all the lines yeah Garrett? just do garrett's voice all the lines um Thief to the sethel age yeah fables of the penitent thief um with all those textures and stuff um <laughs> no but but the idea but the idea is cool when he's that that would actually make real sense like you know no it's the second mission and you already forgot about it but you had a positive um memory of it because it's the second mission pretty basic beautiful and it shows a lot may you know could be a good introduction to the new world and um then Garrett is like, oh, I know where to find one. And then you go back here uh, right before the final mission, which is uh, that that would be a good thing. On the other hand, I think that two mentions um, right after another is maybe too much. I think the decision with the dogs as the second mission was a great one. Because the dogs were a lot of fun. It's one of my favorite shipping and receiving is one of my favorite missions in the game, I would say. Because it's, it's that playground, but I, I I agree with you that, or maybe they sh should have made maybe made the tutorial inside this one and then totally you know overlooked running interference. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the, you know, with the, with Basso and, and Jennifer. You want, a, you want a smaller mission for the tutorial, so I think like you want to keep running interference where it is, and I agree with what you said, Alex. Like I think you want to keep. I don't think you want two mansion heists back to back. I think you want to keep shipping where it is. I Would think. be the same what we were just discussing the whole episode, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tricky, like where you put it, right? I mean, it's just it's a tricky thing. Like if I think, I think you could put it earlier in the game, but uh, you don't. I don't think you want to. I don't think you want to make it the tutorial because I think it'd be too overwhelming and that definitely would be a filter for people that i mean hypothetically you didn't play it would be Befford's, i think maybe it would be befford's manner again and that wasn't the best choice back yeah yeah it's like you have a, such a big mission it's great but it's good for replays but not for first time players i think you put it i think you put it after ambush or after eavesdropping honestly i think after ambush would be better and i think somebody else said this in a comment either on the stream or I think on the stream, like I think you put it after ambush because you just had a city mission. And you just had a mission where you were like off of your off of your game, you know, because you're running away from guards. I think like at that point, coming to a mansion would be pretty good, especially since you didn't you haven't had one since running interference. So, um, and then just eavesdropping is a smaller mission anyway. So like eavesdropping isn't that huge. So I think putting it after ambush, um, you get a big mission. Big mansion mission right after ambush. Eavesdropping is a little bit smaller, so it's a nice cleanse uh, palette cleanser before First City Bank and blackmail. So I could also see like since they didn't finish some of the mission, maybe the eavesdropping thing could have happened here. On the other hand, I think eavesdropping was a good thing of showing the transition from hemorrhoids to mechanist. So there's yep. a lot lot of things that you know. There are some benefits, and then also there are some things like that wouldn't work out, uh, you know, or where other missions would have a strong point. Um, but 
yeah, I think it should be among the first five or six missions uh, in our scenario we just described. Uh, the Sethel Age. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be interesting to have, like, I've thought about this before, and as we're talking about it, my mind is thinking about it more, but having, like, a, you know, having, like, a Thief 2, like, remixed, where maybe you do move this mission back earlier in the game, and maybe you change, you know, you change some other missions, perhaps, like, maybe not, you know, eliminate them, but, I mean, I, I don't I don't fully completely understand exactly all the stuff that you can do with the files and with Dramed, but, like, I wonder if there'd be a, a way to mod the game where you could maybe alter some missions and kind of, you know, maybe it'd be uh, sacrilegious, but make almost like uh, like a Thief 2 fan director's cut. You know what I mean? I, I would still go for my idea of playing as a servant in the second visit, you know, so mm -hmm. that maybe Garrett, after, I don't know, maybe um, after Life of the Party, maybe he goes here. Um and then he he maybe yeah he grabs like the the stuff to to uh, so he can disguise as a servant and maybe it then maybe he needs something from Cavador to make it work or I don't know you know um, and and then yeah like two or three missions in between and then you come back because uh, you know someone needed to to create something for you I don't know and uh, then it, yeah. But I think in, in general, we can say people don't actually mind that you go here a second time, but they mostly criticized that it's back to back. I think that's what I, what I got from from all the comments. Same. Uh, Ekmir said the college mission would have taken place before framed in the hypothetical. The, the thief, well, not the hypothetical, when you say hypothetical yeah. now, but the real Thief 2 gold they're working on. Which that's interesting. Yeah, I think, as you said, a remix would have been great. And I wish Thief 2 Gold, maybe they would have changed it as well here. Um, I don't know. But yeah, but I think we, in general, we got the gist of it. Um, yeah. And, uh, but um, is there anything else we want to cover? Like, oh, Seth, you mentioned that one conversation between Benny and another guard. Yeah, so in this mission, there is an unused conversation between Benny and Benny's friend from Bafford's Manor, where the friend is actually upset with Benny and and says like... Ooh, what? what a surprise! <laughs> Yeah, he's like, every mission I ever do with you, someone breaks in and then we get fired. And then he lists every mission they've previously had a conversation in. So yeah. it's, it's like a fond farewell for those characters. And I I didn't actually realize it's not in the base game because it's been a long time since I've played this. But I played uh, the New Dark version that restored it. And I, I just wanted to bring that up because it's actually very funny that all those lines are recorded and unused. I think it's the T-Fix version, or? Yes, that's the one. Yeah. Um, or no, I, I'm not using T-Fix. I'm using New Dark, so I think, oh, okay. it's, I think it's just New Dark Restoration. Um, I'm not a T-Fixer. Really? Ah, you, you, yeah, it's too modern. and yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you would like, oh, is, you, every, every time someone releases a mission now on, on, on the forums and, or on thiefguild.com, um, <laughs> um, Seth is always like, um, sorry guys, is there an old dark version maybe for this? Um... <laughs> yeah, he's always living in the past. I want my software renderer back. <laughs> um, sorry, can you translate this into a dark, a dark Camelot? Maybe is there a way to do that? <laughs> yeah, but 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 um, back to the conversation. I think um, it's that's actually a really nice thing, you know, because. It's those character, of course, Benny and the other guy, they, they get stuck to your heart a bit. And um, it's the Daniel Tron guy, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and yeah, so Benny and the the angry one. Um, yeah, it's as you said, it's a nice farewell and, and a really cool, it really sums it up and, and it shows and makes this world so much more believable and uh, livable and that we, we discussed that already. Like it's a dark game, but those goofy characters actually make it worth it you know and then yeah nice thing so gives them their own special arc so anything else and uh, you had a lot of comments uh notes uh seth but 
I think we covered pretty much everything that I wanted to over the course of the over the course of the thing. I just wanted to say I really like the ambience. Like I could listen to it all day. <laughs> and thanks to a mental I can. Um or yeah, Arjun G Melum <laughs> Uh I think it's Swedish or something. Um this game is 20 years plus and it's still being talked about. Why is that we still gush about that so many years later? Because it's amazing. What what else can we say? It's a landmark it's a, game. Yep. Absolutely. Plus, like people are still keeping it alive with fan missions. So oh, yeah. it, it makes it uh, easy to go back and compare. It was and just yesterday where when I was on that German stream, um, shout out to Garrett TMT, um, where the people were like asking, hey, anything new on the Black Parade and stuff. And I was just like, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, it takes a while. And I was like, yeah, but isn't it amazing that we are still waiting for like two campaigns in the future, like a Black Parade and the Broken Goddess, you know, like 25 years after the release. And um, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. And um, yeah, and that's why we do this. Oh, it's Norwegian, sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would say thank you very much to the guys in the chat that have been joining us. Also, of course, all the really great comments. This time the quality was really good. Um, and it's mostly, but this time I think uh, it was really well written, everything and with all the different views. And um, I think like missions that, um, yeah, it's like mixed opinions on it are always very interesting even if the mission itself is not so interesting maybe um so yeah thank you very much thank you jake and seth of course and next up uh soulforge Woohoo! some sabotage yeah guys you can already prepare your opinions i would say <laughs> I, I i will ask you in a couple of weeks uh to send them in um, so yeah, thank you very much and see you next time. B -b 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 bye. Bye bye. Take care. And I love this cover art. <laughs>